All right, uh, it's 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, everybody, if that's where you are. Uh, and thank you for coming today to our postdoctoral panelists, our postdoctoral panel. Um, we have some great, great uh, panelists today uh, and looking forward to this event. Um, so I'm going to just do a very quick introduction of uh, NIS. Uh, NIS is the uh, National Institute of Statistical Sciences. Uh, and uh, as part of NIS, uh, this, we have this graduate student network, uh, which we started in 2020, and it's we plan events uh, regularly to uh, support and uh, help the graduate students uh, in statistics and all of the participating uh, pro, uh, statistical programs. Uh, so we have a great event today. Uh, I'll start, uh, I'll quickly introduce myself. My name is Hannah Waddell and I'm a biostatistics PhD student at Emory University. Uh, and we have four panelists today. Uh, so uh, we'll get go ahead and uh, have the panelists introduce themselves. Uh, so uh, panelists, if you could quickly give your name, a um, little bit of background and uh, current position. Uh, so uh, we'll actually just go on the order on my screen. Um, how about we start with uh, Guillermo. Hi, um, I'm Guillermo Basulto. I um, have a PhD in statistics, and a few, a couple of years ago, um, I was a, um, uh, I, I, I had a postdoctoral position at Iowa State University in the Center for Statistics and CSAF and for forensic evidence. I, forgot about the whole thing, but it's in statistics in forensics. Uh, thank you. Um, and next we'll go with uh, Ibo. Oh, hi. Uh, thanks, Hannah. Uh, um, hi, my name is Ibo Xu. Uh, well, I graduated from Clemson University uh, in 2018 with my PhD in uh, mathematics. And then I uh, I spent three years uh, in uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute as a, a postdoctoral research associate. And uh, last year I joined Clemson uh, as a postdoctoral fellow at the School of Mathematical and Statistical Sciences. So I'm happy to be here, although I'm not a statistician, but uh, I hope that my uh, uh, experiences may help the panel and uh, the attendees, thanks. Thank you. Uh, next on my screen is uh, Whitney. Sure. So let me let me share my screen real quick. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yep. Yes. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you very much, Hannah, for uh, putting everything together. So my name is Whitney Huang, and I am an assistant professor uh, in statistics uh, at the School of Mathematical and Statistical Science uh, at Clemson University. So so Ibo is actually my colleague. Uh, I got my PhD a few years ago at Purdue, and I did, uh, so this part is probably more relevant. So I did the two-year postdoc, and this is somewhat different than the other postdoc I would talk about more. So it is a Sensi Kensi joint postdoc. Um, and I have, uh, okay, so the slide's not actually not advancing. So this is not that important, but really the thing is that later I probably will talk about, so I have a full general research area and we, I really start two of them during my postdoc period. Okay, so that's it. Thank you. Start Thank sharing. you. Uh, and then finally, uh, Da Yu. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for your invitation. So my name is Da Yu Sun. Uh, I obtained my PhD degrees from University of Missouri in 2020. And uh, currently, I'm a postdoc fellow at the University of, uh, sorry, at the Biostatistics Department at Emory University. And uh, my research areas uh, lies in like uh, imaging data analysis, survival, and the longitudinal data analysis. Awesome. Uh, thank you. And thank you, everybody, uh, for agreeing to be here. Uh, so now uh, we're going to move into the uh, question portion of the this panel. Um, at, all the participants are uh, view only participants, but you do have the uh, Q&A option if you would like to ask a question of the panelists. Uh, so as you have questions, um, you can put them in there and we'll answer them. Uh, but I'm going to get the question started, uh, get it this started with kind of an introductory question of um, 
why for each of the panelists, why did you decide to take a postdoc position? Um, and what are or what were your responsibilities in your postdoc position? Uh, can, can I go first? Uh, totally, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. So uh, for, uh, for me, the, the main reason for doing a postdoc because I want to uh, be a, a faculty member at the uh, research university in which luckily I, I made it. So, and, uh, so really uh, that is basically my main motivation because at that point when I about to graduate uh, from the graduate school, I probably still have, don't have enough publication and then so I want to during the postdoc period to accumulate more publication and so on. Uh, but in terms of the postdoc I have is a little bit different from uh, the typical postdoc I would say because I did the postdoc at Sensi, which is actually a sort of a sister institute of business. So Sensi is called Statistical and Applied Mathematical uh, Science Institute, I guess. <laughs> um, so. The, the, the main response is actually somewhat different because every year since you have a year long program with certain things. So as a postdoc, of course, you are going to work on some research problem in that area, but that's other thing that you want to help other like uh, uh, main organizers to run the program. So therefore, uh, it's actually, you need to like uh, organize like a working group meeting and uh, in, eventually we hope to uh, have a very successful working group, several of them, and in the end, we should have a something report back to NSF to, to convince them that we are actually very productive. So in that regard, my poster is a little bit different in a sense that uh, research and also a little bit, I would say a little bit part of service. Um, and, uh, and also my poster two years actually I spent in two different places, actually two countries. So that's also a bit different. For my second year, there will be a little bit like a typical bow star where you have particular problem to work on. Okay, so I will start here. Yeah, uh, I think I can maybe start next. Uh, I think Dr. Huang's answer is quite good. I mean, very thorough. So I think I have the similar reasons. The first one is that I decided to go to academia. Actually, I took some internship at pharmaceutical companies a little bit, but I, uh, after the internship, I don't think I fit the industry very well because you were assigned to do something. But as uh, you know, a researcher, we hope to do something independently to find something you are really interested in, you really like. So uh, that's the reason. And after I decided to go to academia, I realized that maybe my profile is not good enough to, uh, I mean, uh, like our, uh, psych, uh, for example, like our, our one in universities, because I have some papers and the review, but not published. And then I decided to go to uh, uh, find a, like a postdoc position. And another reason I want to uh, seek, uh, uh, seek a postdoc position is that I think my uh, PhD research area is kind of like, um, old fashioned, it has been well explored, well explored by my supervisor actually. I try to came up some new ideas, but I soon find that they have been studied by my supervisor or his collaborators. So I think I need a, a new, maybe a hotter or more, more like uh, interesting research areas. So I decided to seek a postdoc uh, position which has some projects. Um, it's kind of like not really similar to my PhD area. So this is why I want to have a postdoc because it can uh, broaden, uh, kind of like uh, broaden my horizon of research. And also I think it can benefit my future career because if you know more areas, it's much easier for you to come up new ideas. You can you know, continue to do research independently to be a, you know, a faculty member. Uh, I think that's the main reason for me to be a postdoc. And uh, during my postdoc uh, position, I. Uh, I think I usually, the first priority certainly is to do research project uh, under the supervision of my uh, supervisors. And uh, besides that, I also do some other stuff like teaching because that's also part of faculty jobs. So it's good, I mean, teaching experience. And uh, also I did some service jobs. For example, we had a, 
uh, kind of like a workshop at Emory University and uh, serve as like chair and organizer to help them to do all the administration stuff and also uh, build a website, partially build a website for the uh, conference. So that's usually uh, what I did. Uh, thanks. I, I, Thank can, I can go next. So um, when I started the PhD uh, in statistics, um, I had the certainty that I wanted to go to theoretical statistics. Uh, but I started, the positions started to change. And at, by the end of my PhD, I was working as a research assistant for the Center for Statistics and Application in Forensic Evidence. Um, so uh, it was a good opportunity that uh, showed up to, to test out, uh, to, to test some um, applied statistics, plus the questions of interest, in, the, the, of interest in forensic statistics are, um, are very interesting. Like uh, how, how do you go from uh, a more qualitative, qualitative description of, of, of what is considered a match to uh, quantifying the uncertainty to, to figure out why the phrases that you see in all those TV shows that this is a 100% match uh, don't make sense or they are based on, uh, many of them are based on bogus science. Um, so starting going um, to, to dig, to, to dig on, on that. Oh, uh, I think I should go next. So uh, basically, if, I, if you ask me uh, why I take the uh, postdoctoral position, I, I would say, well, definitely, it, the thing is, if you plan to get into academia and stay in academia, I would say a uh, postdoctoral position is somehow uh, highly expected. Um, and uh, as, I, as I hear Darius and uh, 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 Guillermo's uh, experience about uh, like a transition in the research direction, that's also a uh, a similar thing that happens during my uh, at uh, near the end of my PhD. So, so um, by that time, I I really planned to expand uh, my research uh, expertise. Um, so at that time, I was mainly looking at uh, postdoctoral positions, um, and uh, it turns out eventually I went uh, from uh, mixed integer programming. Uh, well, although it's not really uh, stati statistical, but uh, um, but uh, I, I went to uh, Rensselaer to do uh, continuous optimization, so which is uh, uh, much more related to uh, statistic, uh, statistical aspects. But uh, uh, well, in terms of that, uh, somehow if you want to expand your uh, research expertise, uh, probably that's uh, a natural choice that you go with uh, research, like uh, research associate uh, kind of position. And for that, for that kind of position, that really depends, I guess, on the founding of your position, right? Then probably uh, as, the, as that kind of a position, um, the research is the most important criteria for uh, that duty. Um, so my experience is uh, uh, kind of different because uh, my first term is like a two to three years uh, position that's supported by uh, uh, PI. So that's... Uh, if uh, that was a funded by the startup grant of, of that uh, of that PI, so then my supervisor is basically supervising my uh, research progress. So that's the most important thing. And then uh, it also comes about like uh, uh, organizing research uh, discussions within a group, uh, uh, do presentations. But but mainly that part is most about the uh, whether the performance, the research performance, is uh, satisfactory or not. So, uh, and then, well, now I'm at my second uh, uh, postdoctoral position. So that's, uh, so the, the reason it, of taking the position is uh, slightly different, but it's the same thing about preparing yourself to, uh, to be successful in the true uh, tenure track position. Um, it, it's, uh, so for, for, I would say for different uh, postdoctoral positions, there are pros and cons. For, for example, if you are really into a uh, research uh, associate kind of position, then probably for several years, you will be concentrating on the research as aspect. And uh, 
and especially uh, during the pandemic, you, you may become somehow intro uh, introverts, and uh, and then at a certain a point of time, you may think, okay, uh, I think I should uh, interact more and communicate more with the uh, research community. Uh, uh, well, probably it may sound funny, but uh, it's my own experience. If it were several years ago, I would probably read uh, a number of papers from a really similar group of researchers. But I, but at that time, it didn't even came to me that I should. Oh, uh, that's uh, this person. Uh, uh, this person again, I, I should uh, reach out to them directly to talk about like uh, high high level ideas or secret ingredients or even uh, a possible um, collaboration uh, opportunities. So so um, for current for the current uh, postdoctoral position, I took it mainly because I really want to. Um, uh, besides continuing uh, to pr uh, produce uh, research um, outcomes, I would also like to somehow um, uh, do networking better and then balance the uh, the research and the future teaching aspects and service aspects as well. So I would say that's mainly about uh, getting better uh, preparation for, for future challenges in tenure track positions. Awesome. Uh, thank you, everybody. And um, we're starting to get some questions in oh. with the Q&A. And um, so uh, this one, uh, there's some specific details in the written question, but I am going to take it and generalize it a little bit uh, to while the panel's talking. But um, I, I do want to ask uh, what qualities are needed, what qualities are useful um, that you could have if you wanted to do a postdoc? Uh, oh, uh this is a very good question. May I, may I continue with what I was saying? Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, go for it. Yeah, I, I, I just recall that uh, I, I was talking why I took the second postdoctoral position, but I didn't really talk about the kind of expectations because so currently uh, uh, now I'm at Clemson University. It's uh, the, uh, the postdoctoral uh, fellow is, uh, is a fellowship that's supported by the, by the School of Mathematical and Statistical Sciences. So now the expe expectation is not only about research. So so somehow the school may have expectation for for your uh, production. At the same time, they will somehow expect you uh, to teach well and uh, even have like growth in in being uh, becoming uh, in being a good uh, instructor, right? And also there are uh, services and somehow you, you uh, it's although not really expected, but somehow you, you do want to uh, build a good connection like networking and uh, organizing uh, like seminar uh, sessions um, and invite people to uh, conference sessions as well. So, so those are the things I would say, uh, if, you if, if you have been spending uh, most of your concentration or time in research, then probably maybe the postdoctoral uh, period you may uh, Put a little bit more effort on networking and get get to know more people and and communicate. The more you communicate, the more you will learn. Oh, uh, probably uh, in the past there's something you have done not that efficiently. Then there's a lot of things that you can improve. So I would say yeah. And also there's a research proposal things that you may also need to think about. That's a, also a really important thing in this period of time. Yeah, does anybody else want to chime in on what are good yeah. qualities in a postdoc? I think I can add one or two points because uh, Dr. Xu's I mean, answers are quite complete. Uh, but I, I think probably uh, usually the qualities for postdoc is just the same as for a PhD, I mean, graduation, because the purpose of either PhD training or postdoc training is to let a person be a, uh, you know, independent research. So, you know, like networking, you know, like, uh, 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 you know, uh, independent research abilities, they are all very important. I think that's uh, the most important part. I think, but one thing different from uh, postdoc, or, or, I mean, PhD training is that usually I think postdoc work more independently. So you can't expect that your supervisor will help you everything. You have to solve many things by yourself. I mean, in terms of mathematics, of methodology, uh, programming, and anything. So uh, I think that's the most, most important part. You must prepare yourself kind of well to be a, like a qualified postdoc. That's my, my feeling. 
Thanks. Uh, can I also, so I think uh, uh, Dayu and, uh, and uh, Ivo are really quite complex. So probably some things just echo. So one thing very important during the postdoc periods, if you actually want to look for the academia job, you want to be very uh, active. So let other people see you. For example, uh, uh, la I think it's la it was last year, I actually went to the Georgia Statistic Day and I actually saw Dory actually chairing the session. So that's actually something besides the research, you also want to show people that you are actively uh, involved in those events. So people see you, so people, when you apply job, you say, okay, uh, this person is very good, not only do the great research, but also have some hand into those like uh, surface business. And another thing, maybe a question for those of you Maybe you're unsure you want to apply for faculty job, but a little bit unsure whether you want to do that or you need to do postdoc. So one thing that's something I learned from more senior person, but I think that's probably a good piece of advice. So if you are doing very good in the research and when you're about to graduate, you already know actually how to write your own proposal. That's probably mean you can go directly to the job market. Not necessarily means you can get a job, but that means at least you're somehow uh, ready. Uh, but if you don't feel you're in that stage, probably the postdoc is a good time period for you to develop those kind of skills. And it's also allow you to, to make the transition from basically change from the student mode and to the independent research. So that's actually the point that uh, both Dari and uh, Evo already made. Yeah, and, and, and that is an, those are important points that there is a big jump from going to, to being a student to uh to to be working in a in a postdoc like um from one day to the other you're no longer a student um there's a, a, a although it might seem at the beginning somewhat similar perhaps it is very different like um I never had to deal with IRBs before for instance and that was something that I had to, to learn and I, I made mistakes and I learned and I hope that, that I don't make them again now. Uh, and also you have to uh, to be more responsible to, uh, to deliver on specific hard dates, uh, certain things. And, uh, and you need to have the, the ability to, to do that. Uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. Uh, those are great answers, very informative. Uh, so uh, moving on to another question, um, which we've received, and we've actually received this similar question twice, um, is whether uh, postdoc positions um, provide uh, work sponsorship or uh, visa sponsorship. Um, and I'm not very familiar with uh, those aspects, but um, I do think some of our panelists were international students, so uh, they might have some insightful answers. <laughs> well, I, I can I can say like, uh, I'm, origin I, I'm from Mexico. And since I got my PhD from, from in, in, in the US, uh, I had this uh, OPT period where I have up to, th up to three years since it's a STEM field. I have I have a permission to work for up to three uh, years and it's quite open. Uh, in the middle of after the first year, I I switched to H one B and there were no uh, complications, uh, major complications with that. Yeah, may I add something into this uh, uh, sponsorship? So. Indeed, this is a very important aspect. Uh, probably when, when I when I apply for postdoc post, postdoctoral positions the first time, I didn't think about some details really carefully. So, um, so for OPT, so this is uh, just now uh, uh, Guillermo just uh, mentioned uh, that you have three years, right? But uh, actually, it's it's one year po uh, OPT uh, optimal optional practical training uh, that's one year that you have and then you can extend it for two years and uh well for uh, for my personal experience with the uh, rensselaer polytechnic institute 
uh, one thing is that although although it's a renowned uh, private university, but uh, it turns out uh, that's uh, near my uh, uh, completion of my first year OPT that they they are not e-verified. So I'm not quite sure if it's uh, the same thing uh, at the moment, but if, it, if an institute is not e-verified, then you are not able to extend your OBT for another two years. And then somehow, so most of the times, like it really depends on what kind of uh, postdoctoral position that you are looking at. If it's like a one year uh, uh, project pro postdoc, then probably they will not really sponsor you for, uh, for the H1B, but you probably need to use your OPT period. But then even if they uh, uh, provide sponsorship for H1B uh, as a, like a research associate kind of position, but then uh, if it's not E-verified Institute, then in the end, your two year kind of uh, extension of OPT will be uh, in vain. So, so that's something you, you may need to consider also when you are digging in uh, with this kind of process. But yeah, that's very important. Yeah, based okay. on my personal experience. One more thing is, uh... If you're going through the H1B uh, route, um, in and in non-academia jobs, you have to go through the lottery, right? And that is not okay. the case for for universities. Although I know there might be some exceptions with this, with all these um, migration topics, the advice is it's good to hear them, but never trust them. You have to always talk to talk to a lawyer because the situation changes from. Uh, for, my, for, for under different scenarios. Uh, I think I can just add one point. I mean, you are talking about that students who have obtained some degrees from the United States that you can use OPT, but there are also some people, they just came from you know other countries directly to United States. They usually use G1 visa, which have two years usually, but there's no extension. That's usually, uh, I mean, the case for a lot of people from, from Asia. That's what I heard. Thank you. Um, to, if nobody else wants to add anything, uh, we can move on to the next uh, question. Thanks for those very thorough answers. Um, I've learned a lot too in this meeting. Um, and uh, so uh, another question would be, um, uh, and this was kind of touched on a little bit in the previous discussion of responsibilities, but um, is the postdoc uh, direct extension of PhD work or um, is it related to a different research area? Uh, I, I think I can add something to this point because uh, for, for myself, Although I'm not a statistician, but uh, uh, for, for my uh, postdoctoral position, uh, the first term is uh, completely different because I was mainly doing mixed signature programming, which is more uh, mathematical programming, that kind of research. But then switching to continuous, like more relating to machine learning, uh, that really depends on what kind of what the kind of preparation that you have uh, established uh, near your completion of the PhD, and then then at that time, if you think, okay, I want to be a little bit more aggressive, uh, reach a little bit further beyond my current expertise, then yeah, that that can be a drastic a drastic change. But also, if you want to uh, stay in the same field, and then you can look at that kind of uh, position as well. So that really depends on well, what kind of uh, uh, expectation they put in the uh, job post, uh, how, how you communicate with the uh, recruiter, and then whether you decide you, you do this uh, completely different route or not, so. Yeah, so uh, I can add something to, to that in my experience, although I was working with the same PhD advisor and the topics were nothing alike. Uh, this was uh, again more, more focused on um, forensic statistics, and my PhD was on non-parametric statistics, and I didn't use any of that for for the postdoc. Uh, I think I can also uh, continue my opinions on that. I mean, as I said at the beginning, I think uh, it's very good to have uh, totally different areas. Uh, for your postdoc training, but I think it also depends 
on uh, what kind of areas you have for your PhD uh, degrees. Because if your PhD area is quite new, quite very, uh, I mean, hot areas in statistics or other areas, I think it's uh, good that you can continue. And also the uh, disadvantage to have a totally different uh, area for your postdoc training, it means that you must need more time to new, I mean, to understand this new area. So sometimes is uh, not that smooth. And uh, I also heard some of people have difficulties to do this transition and have to quit a postdoc or try to find another type of jobs. So it really depends on uh, yourself, I think. Uh, I would also like to echo what uh, Dari say. And uh, so it is good to expand your research area a little bit. Uh, but you, you need to uh, recognize that to make a big change and will have some kind of risk. And uh, for example, if you're going to do a two years post, uh, you need to keep in mind that you actually not have like two years because in the second year, in the beginning of the second year, you are going to prepare for your job application. And that means you need to have a short amount of time to get into another area and then to produce some work. And another thing is perhaps a bottleneck is that you also want to quickly let the other area, because if you already do uh, research in one area, maybe you already established some uh, reputation or some people already know your work. But uh, if you want to shoot that, you need, you, you need to take the chance, you need to take the risk that you, your work might not be that smooth and you might not, people might not get attention to your work in that short amount of time. Awesome. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, and we've had a couple questions kind of on a, a similar topic of uh, finding postdocs and where uh, are good places to find them. Um, and uh, Whitney posted a good link to the University of Florida site in the Q&A um, answered questions. But that just uh, I want to expand that question to uh, how did each of you find your postdoc um, and what recommendations you have in uh, searching for them or uh, finding out information about postdocs? Uh, I think uh, at this procedure, I it all um, depends different people, as I said, even though this is quite lame, uh, lame statement. But from my own experience, I think uh, the first thing I do is just I collected all the postdoc job advertisements from a website. You know, uh, there is a, I think there is a website uh, at FSU, they have a kind of like a job posting website in statistics. And I just collect all of them. And uh, I give some kind of like uh, uh, scores for each advertisement. For example, if I like this one, if the project sounds interesting, if the supervisor are kind of like senior, or I think they are really good professors. And uh, I rank them kind of like from the top to the bottom. And I choose top 10, I just apply them. And, uh, I, I, and then I just wait for, for replies. And uh, fortunately, I got several interviews and I finally choose one. Uh, uh, I think that's my, my experience. I hope it can, it can benefit you. Yeah. Oh, so Dayu, may I ask, uh, when you say FSU, does it mean uh, Florida State University? That... Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, probably University of Florida or Florida ah. State University. I can't remember exactly the name, but I just uh, Google and I find that uh, website. Yeah, I see, I see. Yeah, so this is something I would like to also to learn from the statisticians because, well, for, for me, I was mainly looking at uh, mathjobs.org. So it's just, uh, so that's, uh, uh, there are a lot of job posts, uh, both from uh, math and stats and a lot of other uh, areas. And I also find that there's uh, called uh, Academia uh, Jobs Online, perhaps. That's also, uh, there, has, there are similar job posts um, I'm many look, so bo uh, both of my uh, postdoctoral positions are, I have found the ad advertisements on the um, mathjobs.org. So that's, that's one. Uh, and also, uh, since I'm from Clemson, when I was uh, uh, about to graduate as my PhD, uh, I went to the career center. They, they have the recommendations of uh, establishing your like LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. Then you can do some settings in there. So there'll be like uh, advertisements also coming, coming to you periodically. So that may be also helpful. Um, uh, yes, another, well, if, if you are in statistics, then 
you may join the American uh, American Statistical Association, uh, uh, and, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you will receive a uh, plenty of uh, opportunities. And another very unlikely source of opportunities is Twitter. There are many oh. prominent scientists on on Twitter. Uh, that is not my personal experience, but I know of many friends who who have gotten. Uh, good opportunities, postdocs, and, and even job opportunities uh, by, by following people on Twitter. I personally uh, find always um, re research articles that people say like, oh, I worked on this and, uh, and these are my, my results. And uh, you, you can get something good, at, good at out of Twitter. And it's, if you really exploit it, you, you can really exploit it your advantage That's awesome. I just, yeah i just thought about one more thing so yeah uh about uh if you are interested in certain like research groups right sometimes uh frequently check their website they, they may have like uh announcements saying okay uh, we are hiring postdocs or because some some sometimes they will just uh um, <coughs> just just get the grant then probably they are hiring but they just didn't uh, post anything yet. So yeah, that's uh, also a possibility. Uh, awesome. Thank you, everybody. A uh, lot of good ideas. Um, and uh, for this next question, and this one's actually a little more specifically for Da Yu, but um, mm. But, uh, this is a question asking, um, besides having more freedom in doing research with the academia position, um, can you share some pros and cons when you uh, interned in the pharmaceutical companies versus the postdoc? Um, and okay. if anybody else has experience they want to share, obviously, <clears throat> jump in. Okay, uh, well, this question, uh, let me see. I, I think the uh, big, yeah, I, I, the freedom is essentially, I mean, definitely the most important part. I think the second part is that, um, you know, in a pharmaceutical company or any big companies, there are more layers in a company. So you need to report to different layers of people. I mean, your supervisor, your supervisor, supervisors, and even the big boss. So sometimes it's a little bit, uh, I, I, I don't know, it's just a little bit annoying for me because I, I'm not really uh, uh, comfortable with this kind of different layer reporting. But in academia, it's uh, much easier. I think usually you just need to report to your supervisor or after finding a faculty job, you are your own boss. That's one thing. And uh, for the other thing, actually, I think the farm two companies have very, uh, it depends on the companies, but from my own experience, I think the internship is quite enjoying because sometimes you uh, have a lot of benefits from the company, which usually academia, you know, we uh, compared to the pharmaceutical companies, academia do not have that kind of money. So sometimes you have more resources to do anything you like if you can please your boss to give you permission. And uh, on the other hand, usually they pay a lot of more. Actually, uh, I have a lot of friends and classmates went to academia, uh, sorry, went to pharmaceutical companies after graduation. And certainly they earn like twice or three times than my current salary. So uh, that's that's actually the biggest thing. I, I mean, the so most, uh, I think, uh, uh, probably the biggest advantage of, of uh, doing job in a pharmaceutical company. But uh, personally, I value the, freedom more in academia. For example, if you are in a company, you need to go to the company at 9 a.m. usually, but I usually don't have to do that <laughs> if I'm in academia. I mean, if I don't have class today, I don't have to go to the campus. So this is the kind of freedom I really enjoy. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, next question um, for the panelists would be, uh, your advice on how long before PhD graduation uh, you should start applying for postdoc positions? It's hard. I mean, because it's always uh, as soon as you can, but always the, the PhD is always complicated. In the last year, you are focusing on uh, finishing your your PhD. Uh, at the same time, you are juggling with um, with trying to find a a job, plus thinking about all these 
immigration issues if that's the case. Uh, so I, I, I won't have a, a good answer than other than as soon as, as soon as you can. Or I mean, or at least you have to know if you, you can start a year in advance trying to figure out if, if you want a postdoc or if you want to jump to um, to the to the industry or or trying to find a, a an academic position with with no with no postdoc. Yeah, I agree. Uh, probably the the career plan is uh, may take you more time to when you are studying. You need to think whether oh I should uh, stay in academia or I should want I want to go to in this industry. And then uh, probably about whether take whether uh, apply for a postdoc or want to get into a postdoctoral position, then that's something you are just doing that when you are doing job search. And then probably you'll be looking at a, a, uh, a big pool of uh, like uh, tenure track positions and even industrial positions, depending on uh, your preference. But then, uh, then if you are if you seriously think about uh, um, getting postdoctoral positions, then there are certain preparations that you, you, you have to have, right? You, you should have taken a few number of courses for that particular direction. Otherwise, there's probably no point uh, pursuing that direction. So I guess uh, uh, when you are in the market, then definitely take it uh, serious consideration whether you want to go that direction or not. All right. Um, does anybody else have any advice they'd want to jump in on or, or else we'll uh, move on to the next question? Um, so uh, another question to uh, ask, uh, since we're talking about applying for postdocs, um, uh, let's uh, talk about um, this, the interview process for postdoc positions. So uh, what was the interview process like? Uh, and the application process when you applied for your postdocs? Uh, I think it also depends on different, uh, I mean, universities. I have quite different experience at two interviews. One is just, you know, um, kind of like a usual uh, a phone, a phone interview and a Zoom interview is kind of like two rounds. You first get to talk to uh, one of them and uh, then they set a Zoom meeting and uh, everyone in this group will kind of like uh, have an interview with you for kind of like for one hour. And then you kind of like get a job offer or rejection. That's one kind of experience. And I also have another type of experience that I even have a on-site job. So I, 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 they, they, they kind of like want me to go to their campus to give a presentation and meet everyone and not everyone, uh, most of people, most of faculty members in that department, uh, one by one, they want to know more. And they, I think they kind of like uh, have a decision together, even though the PI is only one faculty, but they want to seek some opportunities or uh, sorry, I mean, opinions from others. That's kind of like two experience I, I got. Uh, so I think it really depends on the university uh, policies. Oh, that, I, that experience sounds like a tenure track yeah. interview. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, half, day, right. half day tenure track uh, interview. For, for tenure track, you raise one day. That's kind of like a mini one. <laughs> yeah. I see. So I can share a little bit. So my, uh, I did not apply many, uh, many postdocs. So uh, maybe it's a bit different from, so for the Sensi, this uh, uh, basically you are going to give a research presentation. Um, I couldn't remember if before that there's any phone interview. Uh, probably yes, but I couldn't remember. But for some other situation, it could be quite informal. So another postdoc position I got because I already know the, uh, the PI very well. So uh, basically, uh, maybe that uh, PI will say, hey, do you want to do a postdoc? And uh, of course, I happen to uh, be around that area. So I just visit him and just very casual check. And after that, you may say, okay, I'm going to uh, give you an offer, but it really depends. So uh, I would say it could be very informal to very formal, like a dark place. Right, in, in, in my case, 
I started working as a graduate, uh, as a research assistant before uh, getting in there. So it was more like a natural, uh, like a natural process. I knew all the people. I knew what the center was about. Uh, so it was easier in that sense. Um, let me think. My personal experience, well, the, uh, right after my uh, graduation, well, before my graduation of uh, PhD, um, so I had two interviews that's uh, postdoctoral. Uh, one of them is a one year project postdoc. So that's, uh, so actually, it's the interesting thing that. Um, the, the PI back then was the, one of the professors that I met in another uh, conference. And then it seems like he's quite interested in what I did uh, in my dissertation. So, so uh, the interview was an, at another conference uh, and we just uh, met and chat, chatted. And then uh, he decided that uh, uh, to, to give me an offer. And then another another uh, postdoctoral that's uh, two to three years that's at Rensselaer that's also uh, not not super formal is uh, um, a, a, a online interview. I, I forgot whether it's Zoom or, or what, but uh, yeah, it's online. So basically uh, talking about the research, um, ask you a number of questions, something like that. Not not super formal. And then it, now if it comes to something like uh, the fellowship position at Clemson, that's a little bit formal, but, uh, but still it's online interview. There's a committee and they'll be asking questions uh, and getting to know you better. And uh, so, yeah, it really depends on, I, I would say probably uh, how, how your uh, position is founded. So if it's a departmental or even there's an organization that involves that may be more serious. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, we have a couple questions kind of related to um, postdocs and industry and uh, what your opinions on those are. But um, the so the first question I'll ask um, is this uh, if so somebody's asking, um, what if you do a postdoc um, and I, I, I did a postdoc say and uh, I, I wasn't able to get a, a job in academia after a postdoc? Um, do people typically move to industry um, as a statistician? Um, and in that case, do you think a postdoc helps or hurts um, pros like the prospects in industry? I think it also depends. I know uh, it also depends on whether you are international students. You know, the one big thing for international students is because we need a visa. And usually if you go to industry, you can't get H1B immediately. You need to, you know, through a process to kind of like a lottery. So usually companies expect an international students have three years OPT. So they have three times or three chances to get H1B. But if you, for example, if you <clears throat> did two years postdoc, and then you went to academia, oh, sorry, industry. It means that you only have one chance to get H1B. And if you can't, can't get H1B, it means that you can't work at American, I mean, legally. So I heard that many companies actually don't want, I mean, hire those people. They, even though they are quite qualified, but they don't want to hire them because you are not kind of like a stable staff for that company. So uh, some people, even they, uh, I, I heard one of, uh, I heard one guy actually went to FDA because FDA is also a nonprofit organization, even though it's kind of like a, a government agency, so they can they can get H one B without lottery. So so that's one approach. But usually, for international students, uh, if you spend like be like two years postdoc, there's usually little chance you can go to industry. Expect, expect that you can solve the solve the visa problem, or if you get green card. Uh, but if there's no such constraint, I think it doesn't matter. I, I know some people uh, just went to industry after one year postdoc because he didn't like academia and uh, he, he actually enjoys very, very well in, in industry. So it actually depends on your visa status and, uh, and, uh, and your own preference. 
Uh, I would also like to add something here. So usually when people think about postdoc, you try to apply for a place in the university or some research institute, but actually that actually more uh, opportunity here. And actually, if you guys check the uh, the chat that NIST, they actually have a very, very good postdoc program and they have a very strong uh, postdoc alumni. Uh, and although I would have to say, unfortunately, SANSI as an institute, they uh, start to get funding from the uh, NSF, but there's uh, another uh, NSF institute at Chicago. They probably in the near future, they probably will also have a postdoc, but uh, even like a place like IBM, they also have their postdoc program. Although the IBM is slightly different, you actually will get higher pay. And I, based on my impression that some people have a higher chance to actually become actually uh, a formal research staff there. Similar things can be said to the uh, uh, DOE lab, for example, like Argonne National Lab, uh, Sandia, Los Angeles, uh, Berkeley Lab. So that also other uh, national lab in which they might have some uh, postdoc position that is suitable for statistician. So those, uh, for example, if you do a DOE postdoc, uh, that's also because I also know quite a few of my friends, uh, my collaborator, they actually doing a couple of years postdoc uh, at the DOE lab, like at Oregon National Lab, and later on they can become a uh, research scientist. So again, it depends, but I would say uh, actually the, uh, there's actually a wider opportunity in terms of postdoc, not just restrict yourself to the university, for example, mm -hmm. like Fred Hutchinson at uh, Seattle, they also have a very strong postdoc. So depend on which role you choose, some case you could actually potentially increase your chance, hopefully not decrease, but uh, I guess uh, in a way that you could definitely make a case that you will say uh, doing the postdoc, what is the added value, even though in the end you decide to go to the industry, you can still use this experience and use saying that this will add, will add some value, even though I'm not going to do the, uh, uh, and I'm not go to the academia. Uh, yeah, thank you um, for, uh, Good input. Um, and this is uh, kind of a, another question sort of related to working in industry, but kind of in the reverse. Um, so whether it would be possible to do a postdoc um, after five years of working as like a research associate to get um, research experience in a different area. Um, so uh, our postdocs typically um, done right after the PhD, um, or do they have to be done right after the PhD, or do some people come back and do them after working for a little bit? It's a bit hard to answer, but I guess it's definitely possible. So as a statistician, I won't wait, don't, don't say anything like a probability equal to zero. So that you probably would need to try a little bit harder to convince your uh, the potential PI uh, explain, give a very strong reason why you want to do that. So if you have that, I think you, uh, I would say probably don't, uh, just, just go ahead do it. <laughs> right, because um, the, the postdocs are, as far as I understand, is to gain more experience. So if you were working uh, in, in, in the industry for, for a few years, then um, you gain some uh, other so, sort of experience. It is possible to go back to to academia, but I I'm not sure if the uh, if postdocs are the optimal way to do it. Yeah, thank you. That's a, oh, excuse me. Uh, oh, I, I think I was thinking uh, if if. Uh, I really appreciate the witness uh, advice on this because I was thinking, oh, uh, if if it were the the myself that's before this panel, I probably would say, okay, uh, there are certain probably some requirements on the job post that uh, uh, please apply if you are like within five years of uh, PhD completion. There are some certain requirements, but uh, indeed. Um, probably it's not really the barrier between you and the position please try to reach out because that's something that's uh, most mostly from yourself that you, you you want to somehow be active and and try that uh, it doesn't hurt asking right so right that's the only thing I would, would like to add thanks
Thank you. Um, and so we have another question. I think this might be a tough question, but it is, oh. um, why would somebody not take a postdoc position um, and what might be the drawbacks of that? Um, I think it, actually I, 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 I read an article a few days ago. Some, I think, uh, I can't remember the institution, but they did a lot of research on people, on people in academia and they find that uh, there is no benefit of doing postdoc for faculty members. It's kind of like a social, a social science research. Probably that's the reason. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a solid uh, uh, scientific fact, but uh, that's indeed some people think that postdoc may not benefit your uh, career uh, that much, actually. So I think that one reason. And another type of reason is that if you can find a faculty job, you really don't have to do a postdoc because the ultimate purpose to being a postdoc is to find a job as a faculty member. So that depends. Um, and also I think another thing for postdoc is that the salary pay is usually lower than, I mean, a full assistant professor and also some people in uh, industry. So if people have some financial stress or some financial problems, I think postdoc may not be a good choice. Uh, so I think it really depends on your own choices and also the areas. So for example, for statistics, usually uh, many people just went to industry directly and earn a lot of money. So there's no indeed, I mean, but for example, for people in biology, I heard that I have a friend in a chemistry, they need a very long time to start to get a job, to get a faculty job. So I think it really depends on your areas. And I think for statistics, it's okay, it's okay. So, so I will add this. So one indication that you might not want to do a postdoc is if you are not actually enjoy uh, doing research, it's probably not a good idea to do a postdoc. Um, maybe some people might think, okay, I don't like my current research. Maybe I switch to another direction. I will start to enjoy the research and then be a successful postdoc. But based on my experience, that probably happen uh, very unlikely to happen. And also consider because during the PhD, you have to have more time to develop that. So even though if you, it's not that enjoy doing research, postdoc is probably not necessarily that good for you, especially if you are struggle to uh, be an independent research. Uh, again, postdoc is probably not the good choice for you, but fortunately as a statistician, you have many other choices, just like what Dari said. <laughs> You're right. Right. Um, uh, nobody else wants to chime in. Uh, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, and I'll say uh, we are kind of moving on to uh, the last few questions in the Q&A. Um, almost done with that. So um, if anybody has any questions, um, be sure to get those in. Um, if we reached into the questions in the Q&A, um, we'll uh, wrap up uh, a little early. But um, so uh, one more question um, is, um, how many papers um, should should be written uh, and published to finish a postdoc, um, whether there's any requirements on that? Um, and uh, the so yeah, those requirements for like papers and publishing for a postdoc, and I guess how you how you decide when it's done. <laughs> I, I think it depends. Uh, when I was right now, I work at the at the Institute for Transportation of Iowa State University. Same university, totally different area, uh, totally di different responsibilities. But when I was a postdoc, my main responsibility, responsibility was to be in charge of uh, designing a longitudinal study of shoe prints. So I had to, to be involved in the design on, on the uh, looking for uh, for personal uh, looking for participants, then since, since it's longitudinal, then to track them, uh, to track them to collect all, all the data, to process all the data, and that takes a lot of time. So uh, by the time I I finished, uh, I could I couldn't even I I couldn't 
I did, did not finish the process of, of making the data, the data set available. Some other researcher uh, made, sure, made sure that the database were uh, accessible and, uh, and there's a paper in, in the workings. But that helped me, uh, that, that, that experience of designing and man managing the, the students and all the process helped me with, to get my, my current um, research position as a research scientist. Uh, so papers are about to, uh, about to come, but, uh, but still there's something concrete to, to refer to. I think that is important in, in this case, but that changes from, uh, from area to area. So Guillermo was talking about the uh, proce data processing time period. It, it can be super long, right? And also uh, when we were doing like machine learning, uh, like uh, high dimensional problems, uh, it, it may, the computation may take uh, months to, to run. So yeah, indeed. And then it really depends on what kind of publication that you're getting. So if it's a uh, journal, if it's journal, then it may take months and even over a year to to get out, and then <laughs> probably you have done the work, but you, you uh, it's not published yet, or you go it's going uh, uh, through those uh, review processes. So by the time you get into the market, it may be just uh, listed and submitted. But uh, so that probably that's not something you you can control yourself. So I would highly suggest that you, you should talk to say the mentor, the supervisors, and let them evaluate whether you're ready or not, and uh, whether you're confident or not. And then also talk to talk to people, talk to uh, outside friends, so that they they may, they may give you a better idea. Right? It really depends on uh, what kind of field that you're in. So. Yeah, and that, that is important. You have to to talk to to, to get your, your know to get to know your advisor who, who is going to be supervising you uh, to see what is their um, how do they work because uh, there are some I have seen here in in the Institute for Transportation the uh, some faculty members they have very concrete plans that they prioritize uh, getting papers out. Uh, so if that's your goal, you you should definitely look for a for an for a supervisor that thinks alike. If you have another thing in in mind, then but that is very important to to get to know the the place that you wanna work at and and the, the place that you're gonna do your postdoc in, and and the and the people that is gonna be supervising you. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you for your answers. Um, and we do have uh, one more question or another question that uh, came in, which is um, whether you should, uh, is it, do you propose uh, your own postdoc or is it uh, primarily that you work on a project already provided by a PI? Uh, I can quickly say something about this because again, uh, my, my post size is a bit different. So it's a uh, my sense of postdoc, you can actually, you have a total degree of freedom, but on the other side, you actually have a, but so you work with several different people, but you don't have like a big boss sort of speak. So you can uh, do your own work. You can think about, okay, provide some kind of uh, project and then work on that. Uh, and somehow for my second year is also when in this way. So I think that is also, they have some advantage and disadvantage. So that they, they force you to become an independent uh, researcher, but also uh, some people might be a bit too ambitious, come out with a project that is probably not doable within the reasonable time frame. So uh, in my case, uh, is uh, so, so I sort of work uh, independently, but I would imagine if you on the post which is on a specific grant and they have certain like a uh, delivery requirement, they might be, they, it's very likely to be a different story. Yeah, I also think it depends. Uh, for example, my supervisor actually have a R1 funding. So they have specific aims to be finished. And uh, I'm just re hired to finish those specific uh, projects targets. 
but uh, I, I heard that some uh, postdoc may have more degree of freedom, but I think usually postdoc don't need a proposal to apply for a postdoc job because it's kind of like an independent faculty, I mean, I mean responsibility, so it, I don't think so. So uh, relating to my own experience, uh, well, in, in, a, in a project postdoc or well, in a, as a research associate, probably the, the planning is done by this, uh, the, the supervisors, the, the PI. So um, he will be writing uh, plans and then uh, go, uh, achievements, right? And then, so that's in that case, uh, you somehow need to um, have production. But then if it were a fellowship, like uh, what I have in, at Clemson, then you are making your own plans. You, you, you have like annual plan for teaching, research, and service, like a divide up. And then, then you, at the end of the year, you will have to f fulfill your own propo proposed pl uh, plans and goals yourself. And then there's a degree of freedom there, but uh, also, I highly recommend that you talk with your mentor really often. And if there are certain possibilities or uh, you have challenges in your own research, because communication, very important. Thank you so much, everybody, for your answers. Um, we haven't gotten any uh, new questions in this time. And I think um, we're about ready to wrap up. Um, so, oh, and actually one more question just slipped in. We'll make this the last um, question, but um, we'll uh, ask, uh, is doing postdoc helpful only for academia or in other areas? It could be useful to, for, for, other, for, other, for other areas like, um, again, uh, I, I did not, uh, I wanted to, to work on theory by the end of my, uh, close to, to, the, to the end of my PhD, but then I started to change. So the, the postdoc was useful uh, to do that. Right now, uh, I feel better prepared to, to go to, to either like, a, I'm a research scientist, so I, I, I can go either way. And I feel that I like, have better tools to, to, do, to do it. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, now I do think that uh, at the post uh kind of position, you, you have the option to look, look into those research labs. And that's, uh, yeah, that's a very good option. Because uh, the, the way I think about it is more like uh, if, you, if you are at a boundary of uh, theory and practice, then then okay, you have uh, a lot of uh, choices, but then if you are quite into the theory like, like myself, then uh, I would just say, okay, I will go with the uh, uh, postdoc and uh, stay in academia. So that's, uh, that really depends on uh, your choices, preferences. Yeah, so the, the postdoc might help you complete your skill set to, to go to, uh, a specific uh, area in, in the industry, in high paying jobs like uh, that required by uh, statisticians or, uh, or so, some sort of. Awesome, thank you. Um, so uh, with that, I'll say um, questions are closed. Um, yeah, thank you so much to our panelists for participating. Um, and uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Uh, so I'm going to put in the chat the link to um, the NIS Graduate Student Network. Um, we have a, a site, Google site, where uh, you can come and take a look at some events we have coming up and what we're all about. Um, so uh, everybody, please thank um, our uh, wonderful panelists for all the awesome information they gave us. Um, and I hope everybody has a great Thursday. Thank you so much, everybody. Okay. Also, thanks for the invitation. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, thank yeah. you for the invitation. I learned a lot. <laughs> thanks, yeah. me too. Yeah, me too.